They have been accused of just about every heinous act in history. From the Crusades, to the Great Depression, to 9-11. They are the New World Order, and some say their goal is simple, total control of the human race. There's a good deal of talk about a New World Order, that there is a powerful elite of government leaders, financial leaders that want to control the globe for their own benefit, for their own safety. The signs of their handiwork are reportedly everywhere, on our money and our monuments. But just who is the New World Order? There are notions that the Masonic Order has been trying to control the planet for centuries that the Illuminati is a secret order with the goal of control. The Bilderberg Group is a well-known gathering of world leaders. With a plan that allegedly involves everything from global chaos to human depopulation to martial law, could a new world order rule the planet? I hereby declare this to be an unlawful assembly. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a new world order. Tonight, the dark mystery behind the new world order will be unsealed. What if the history you were taught in school was all a lie? Is our government controlled by a secret society? Welcome to the world of conspiracy, where cover-ups, secrets, and hidden agendas all trace back to a single source. We're about to unseal the secret files the government doesn't want you to know about. This is Unsealed, Conspiracy Files. 1776, the American colonies are at war with England, the most powerful country on the planet. A group of ragtag colonists led by General George Washington fight to gain our independence. Chaos is the order of the day. There's no doubt there were some big key players in the founding of the nation, like George Washington, our first president, that were, in fact, Masons. After the mighty British are defeated, the United States of America is born. Though the new nation's constitution calls for equality for all, George Washington and his fellow Freemasons are already sowing the seeds of secrecy. When the stone was laid for the Capitol building, George Washington was there and he was in full Masonic garb. So the Masonic influence was there, but how deep it went, that's a big question. Is it possible that our founding fathers wanted to set the stage for a new world order? The symbols of our nation could spell out a conspiracy of colossal proportions. But the point is that it's been around for a while. The new nation adopts the Great Seal of the United States in 1782. It stamps the treaty that ends the Revolutionary War and every other international agreement since. And it's loaded with secret, some say occult imagery. The classic five-pointed star, also known as the pentagram, is a symbol used in Masonic terms as the burning star. And this could have various significances going well into our past. And that's only one side of the Great Seal. The all-seeing eye has definitely been a prominent symbol in Masonic cultures for hundreds of years. When we see these insignias, like the one that says, Novus Ordo Seclorum, coming of the new ages, we have to wonder if this actually means coming of the new world order. From the capstone at the Statue of Liberty to the all-seeing eye in the back of our dollar bill, these symbolic references can be found throughout our culture, and it's almost as if if one is really looking for it, they're everywhere. As the new nation suffers through its growing pains, the rich are already getting richer. But to fulfill their plan for a new world order, they'll need help from around the globe.
England, the late 1800s. The Industrial Revolution creates a new generation of robber barons and captains of industry, each angling for his own piece of the new world order. A Freemason named Cecil J. Rhodes leaves the luxury of England behind for Africa. He founds the De Beers Mining Company, which will soon control 90% of the world's diamond market. So Cecil Rhodes became rich in the diamond market. But in Africa, he's not seen as the great scholar, the great founder of the Rhodes Scholarship. He's seen as an oppressor. Rhodes is also a vocal advocate for expanding the British Empire. He predicts that together, the United States, England, and Germany will one day rule the world. Starting with Cecil Rhodes, the British began to establish this idea of, of inner societies that literally would set policy to put their own in place. By the 1900s, the new world order is gaining steam. America is an emerging power, both economically and militarily. So John D. Rockefeller, being the first billionaire in existence, made some very interesting contributions in the form of land dedicated solely for the purposes of the United Nations. What would John D. Rockefeller be getting in return? Victory over the Nazis in World War II ushers in the American century. The balance of world power shifts, and suddenly, is it the new world who gives the orders? Coming up next, the elements of the new world order's supposed hidden agenda. Do they simply want your money? Do they want your freedom? Do they even want your life? Unsealed Conspiracy Files. If theories are true, a shadowy coalition of powerful men, international bankers, and secret societies are the real rulers of planet Earth. They are known as the New World Order, and some say they have a four-step plan for world domination. Step one, control the wealth. These secret societies grew because various bankers got together. 1913, Washington, D.C. President Woodrow Wilson signs a law creating the Federal Reserve Bank. Despite its name, the Federal Reserve is a private institution which controls the creation of currency in America. And as goes the American economy, so goes the world. When we look at the idea that Woodrow Wilson made a conscious decision to create the Federal Reserve, essentially giving the power of the U.S. Treasury to this private company, he became terrified when he realized he had given more power to bankers than the actual elected officials. Step two, create conflict. War is a big business. There are a lot of companies that make a lot of money and benefit greatly by countries going to war. That's just the harsh reality of it. Why? They make weapons, they make bombs, they make technology that, are, that is utilized in war. So ultimately, they're gonna benefit. You can't hide from that fact. From the Vietnam War to the invasion of Iraq, the US and its allies have a history of interventions with murky motives behind them. sad thing about 9-11 is that the terrorists won, in a sense. They had a huge impact. The Patriot Act is a scary document. The amount of freedom that is lost. Phones can be bugged. People can be brought in for questioning. Home invasions can be made legal. With every military action comes casualties. And some say that plays right into the hands of the New World Order's Step 3. Initiate depopulation. When the planet hits a certain number, it will not be sustainable. And we're getting there quickly. It is frightening. Planet Earth in the 21st century 
is a dangerous place. Deadly pandemics. The threat of nuclear and biological warfare. Right now, eight countries have admitted that they have nuclear weapons. Those are the ones we know about today. International terrorism. Could the new world order be the force behind these issues that plague mankind? Or are the world's power elite simply sitting by and watching it unravel? This feeds the conspiracy theory of who's controlling society. As the bodies continue to pile up, the near future could be a very dark place. A world where food and water is scarce. A world where society completely breaks down. A world that plays right into the hands of the final piece of the New World Order's plan. Enact martial law. Martial law means that the constitutional provisions of government are suspended and the military takes over the domestic enforcement of whatever rules the government sets forth. The United States has seen martial law imposed several times throughout its history. The last time martial law was officially declared was during the civil rights era. Martial law will have the military take control over society. We will see tanks and troops in the streets and they will ultimately define our every day until order is restored. Coming up, if conspiracy theorists are right, the New World Order already controls the military and the money supply. Will they need a central command center? Some say they may already have built one right under our noses. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. For centuries, some have claimed a new world order is manipulating the masses to affect global supremacy. And they may have just built their headquarters. Unsealed Case File. Denver International Airport. 25 miles outside of Denver, Colorado, is the Denver International Airport. It's the largest airport in the United States and the second largest in the world. Its fueling system can pump more than 1,000 gallons of jet fuel per minute and holds over 2.7 million gallons of jet fuel in reserve. Some say an ominous statue just outside the airport represents the pale horse of death from the Book of Revelation. And it's only one of many ominous symbols in the airport. The Freemason's primary emblem, the square and compass, is embedded in the airport's capstone. Murals painted throughout the airport depict a world in turmoil. Rainforests burning. Children in coffins. What sort of message do these images carry? So these murals at the Denver International Airport really start to raise a lot of questions. This one that looks like some type of Hitler form, and we see clearly people uh, under arduous task being, you know, led into this. It's very reminiscent of a Holocaust scene. The official story is that the images merely represent the lines in a poem. Some people see a more sinister explanation. These images of a, a child uh, holding Bible and symbolic flowers and a timepiece, are we talking about some type of like end of days? Uh, these really do raise a lot of questions. So the murals are one thing, but it's what's under the Denver International Airport that's most exciting. One hundred ten million cubic yards of earth removed. Twenty eight miles of pipeline installed. Five thousand feet of fiber optics. Eight buildings buried after their construction. And an alleged tunnel system, which is separate from the airport's transportation shuttles. Are these the tools of a standard commercial airport? Nobody knows what's down there. And girls 
point to caves going into the earth, which some conspiracy theorists say is really a code for what's under the Denver airport. You will find underground structures to house people, to house members of the New World Order when, quote unquote, Armageddon comes. Could the Denver International Airport house an underground headquarters for the New World Order? Former structural engineer Phil Schneider thought so. He spoke frequently about the topic. In Colorado, yes, there's about four underground uh, bases, one being at Denver International Airport. No wonder your uh, luggage uh, 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 gets lost. There are eight levels underneath the airport uh, tarmac. And it was Phil Schneider who alerted the whole conspiracy world to the presence of a secret government New World Order plan to establish underground bases. I am a direct threat to the entire system. The New World Order, the alien agenda is one in the same. It's world takeover and the decimation of the population of this planet. January 17th, 1996. Phil Schneider is found dead in his Oregon apartment, strangled by a catheter. Local law enforcement rules his death a suicide. Are there others like him who have been silenced by a shadow government? If so, how safe can any of us truly be? Up next, we'll take a hard look at just who might be a part of the New World Order. Which public figures, billionaires and politicians, have known links to the secret societies that some say are really ruling the world? We're naming names when we return. Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Welcome back to the world of conspiracy. This is Unsealed Conspiracy Files. Most agree that if there is a new world order, it's made up of members of the world's most notorious secret societies. But who are these shadowy power brokers? 14 U.S. presidents have been members of the Freemasons, as were nearly half the men who signed the Declaration of Independence. In the 2004 election, both U.S. presidential candidates were members of Yale University's secretive Skull and Bones Society. The Bilderberg Group is a yearly invitation-only assembly of the world's most elite and powerful policymakers. Some call it merely a think tank. Detractors accuse them of more nefarious motives. Freemasons, Skull and Bones, the Bilderberg Group, three different secret handshakes, one new world order. Unsealed. Conspiracy Files.